What crime is terrible as you know? Story 1. Guy I went to school with was really calm, very smart, and everyone loved him. He was a gentle person from what I remember. He had lost his mom a couple years before this. She was a nurse and they found her dead in a hospital room during her shift. Unknown causes. Our senior year of high school, dude is a championship wrestler dominating his grades and just doing good. He lived with his dad who was a police officer for years and years. At lunch one day he left school and came back. Everything was normal and the day was finished. His dad did not show up for work that evening and the police dept sent someone to go knock on his door. They found the house ransacked and his dad lying in bed with a single gunshot wound to the head, deceased. Later that night they called my grandmother in for questioning because she cleaned their house once a week. Not much later than that, the guy I went to school with broke down and confessed that he had come home on lunch to ask for money, and he and his dad got in an argument. His dad laid down like normal for his shift, and he took his dad's service pistol and shot him, and after realizing what he'd done, he'd freaked out and turned the house upside down to make it look like a robbery. Then went and finished the day at school to try to make it seem like he had no clue what had happened. Shocked everyone. Story 2. When we were in school, this boy from our year we were 13 years old or so at the time was with his two older brothers and kidnapped a man. The man was dating their sister and at that time, people were very protective if you dated someone's sister. They took him to a petrol station and covered him in petrol. They then took him to a forest and burnt him alive. All three brothers went to prison but since they were minors I don't think they got that many years. When I was 21 20 seconds I bumped into the guy from my year in a takeaway. And he tells me he's working at the local supermarket. Few months later I ended up working in that same supermarket. And he goes to me. If anyone messes with you let me know. I'm thinking nah I don't want them dead in a forest. Story 3. A friend in college grad student while I was undergrad back in the early 2000s suffered from schizophrenia but was well controlled on meds. Long story short his student insurance stopped covering his meds and he was unable to get in to see a psyche before he ran out. Out of pocket was nearly a grand a month. He tried rationing meds but declined rapidly and he and his mom spent three days frantically trying to find an inpatient bed in a psych unit that could take him. I know that he was very worried that he would hurt somebody and could feel himself slipping away. On the fourth day he shot and killed his pregnant wife. He then tried to kill himself but succeeded only in shooting off his own lower jaw. Thing is that when his head was right he was such a good guy and he was so excited to be a dad. It was all he talked about some days. That and he loved his wife like crazy, always talked about how out of his league she was and how lucky he was. As far as I know he's still in jail, still has no mandible, and now that he's back on meds, is fully cognizant of what he's done. I cannot imagine his grief and guilt. I guess instead of looking for a hospital bed, he should have just gotten himself arrested. Our us mental health system, if you can even call it that, is a very, very bad joke. Story 4. I only met him once as a kid, but my granddad's brother-in-law. He approached me and my mom in a cafe, I was eight, and tried starting normal conversational small talk. My mom panicked and asked him what the hell he was doing out of prison. He brushed her question off and he knelt down to talk to me, which made my mom pick me up, sling me over her shoulder, and run back to the car. I just remember being so scared by her sudden moves I quietly burst into tears in the car and we drove halfway home. Mum then stopped in a supermarket car park, got in the back, unbuckled me, and we cuddled in the back for what felt like days most likely in our tops whilst we both cried. I had no clue what was happening but mum calmed me down and she kept saying you're safe. I love you over and over. I found out years later he slit my granddad's sister his wife's throat and brutally beat her to death. Hence my mum's fear. Story 5 I don't know how to quantify this among all the horrific things I've seen in this thread, but I've wanted to get it off my chest for a long time and I've never been able to tell anyone Ireland because it's not my story to tell. When my mom was six years old, she was molested by a neighbor. She told her mom, nothing happened to the neighbor. That's all I know for sure. My mom was very vague about the details, but based on what I know happened and the timing of it all, I believe her mom blamed her and threatened to harm her if her father took any action. Her father left, which was a long time coming anyway, with good intentions but ultimately left her alone in a dangerous situation. 
Her mom brainwashed her over several years into believing she had done something wrong, so when she was finally allowed to seek help as a teenager the pastor at their church, never a mental health professional, she couldn't argue when her mom told the pastor that she was a s who tempted men for fun. She was never allowed to be alone with men as a child because she might do something to cause to rant. Ultimately, she was kicked out at 17 when her mom found out she was active. This forced her into a very dangerous living situation. I was born two years later. I always hated my grandmother and refused to see her whenever I had a say. When I was old enough, I cut her off entirely. She showed up at my grad party and I left. This was all before I knew what she did to my mom. Sometimes you can just smell the evil rolling off someone. My mom tried patching things up with her last year and now constantly complains to me that her boundaries aren't being respected. It's infuriating, but it's her journey, so I vent on Reddit, I guess. Story 6. Someone I was close friends with till college was ripping his wife's daughters from her first marriage for years. He was also filming it and distributed the material and was teaching other pedos internet security and how to use the dark web. A laptop involved in a sting in the UK ended all his careful trail covering. The investigation revealed over a decade of traceable data of his activities building a CP criminal network. Story 7. My sister's friend's mom, her boyfriend, and the mom's cousin all killed my sister's friend in such a horrific way. They strangled her. <coughs> assaulted her, dismembered her, and burned her body in the bathroom tub all on the girl's 10th birthday. Weeks before this happened, the mom and the little girl came to my sister's 10th birthday party and met our whole family. We had pictures of them on Facebook and my sister even almost stayed over for the night. Horrible. Our local news is currently showing live videos of the trial for the three that murdered her. I cannot watch it, and I do not want my sister watching it because she is still too young to know what happened to her friend. I've been trying to protect her and make sure that she doesn't find out more than what we've told, which is that she has passed away. Hearing our news literally breaks my heart. Story 8. My neighbors left their dogs locked in their apartment while going on a vacation. Poor dogs died of starvation. We all thought they might have taken them along. When it began to smell terrible, we called the cops, they forced their way in and found out what had happened. The cops tried reaching out to the owners but it turned out they were in another country. They talked on the phone and a relative of their living nearby came to talk to the police. Their arguments were, how can you break into our house and we can do whatever we want with our dogs? I don't know what happened next. Also that apartment as a whole was toxic and I'm happy I moved out last month. This incident is from late 2019. Story 9. I lived down the road from Terry Joe Volner. He rode my bus every day and was also a violent horrible person. He murdered a five-year-old because he had feelings for the kid's mom and I guess she didn't feel the same. So he murdered one of her kids, took a picture of the child's body and sent it to the child's mom and told her he was going to kill her other kids that he was babysitting if she didn't come home right now. He got life, then he beat his cellmate to death with his bare hands so brutally they considered the death penalty. He got life again. Story 10. I still remember one day when my cousin and I got in trouble for fighting. We got sent to our rooms for the rest of the day. That night, I remember hearing something so I poked my head outside my room and saw him walking into her room. At that age, I was scared because I thought he was gonna yell at her first, then yell at me. He never came to my room. Years later, he's in jail and I remember this and realize he wasn't going into her room because of what we did that day. He also got around 8 years, luckily no suicide has come from his actions. On the bright side, shortly after being sent to prison, another inmate didn't take too kindly to a pedophile and punched him across the side of his head and caused him to go blind in one eye. During the court hearings, he requested visitation from me I was never a victim fie so I wrote the judge a letter saying I would hit my fingers with a hammer so I'd have to go to the hospital and avoid our scheduled visitation. He stopped pursuing any form of visitation after that. Story 11. A friend was brutally murdered a few years back. Due to my relationship with him and having met his assailant a few times, I cooperated with investigators. I was privy to details not released to the press or initial public records. They didn't just stab him to death, he was tortured. Then they took cash advances at his bank's ATMs to go on a drug spree. Drove his beloved Mustang all over then partied in his house for a few days. 
The victim was gay and their murderer immediately tried to pin his disappearance on a soldier he was seeing. Unfortunately, the stench of decay prompted police to get a search warrant. Emfer had the receipt in his pocket for the container he'd bought for my friend's body. I still can't walk down a storage solutions aisle. All I can think about is what size bin would accommodate someone my friend's size. Dude had a rap sheet and a public defender ended up doing a plea deal. We'll be locked up for at least a few decades with good behavior. He should never even hope of seeing the light of day after he butchered someone like an animal then hung out in the next room like it was nothing. Story 12 a former co-worker murdered his friend when the friend agreed to work with the police to bring down my co-worker for stealing a shipment of human growth hormone. Apparently it was a vicious murder. They burned the body, Irk, but it's been a while. My co-worker ended up being on the run for many years and was eventually turned in after his story ran on America's Most Wanted, his fiancée saw it, and he confessed who he was to her. She waited until he was asleep and went to a payphone to turn him in. Story 13 Friend of mine ended things with her abusive ex and started seeing a new guy. She's got a kid with her ex so he's not quite out of the picture, uses the kid to stay in touch with her. This is important for later. Anyway, the new guy is being all sweet and she thinks she's falling for him. He smelled of <coughs> to me but I didn't want to spoil her newfound happiness. Things get to the bedroom and he says he doesn't need a condom, he's had a vasectomy. She asked him to wear one anyway and he did. For the first five minutes, dude slipped it off. She assured me that he's not like that and it had just fallen off and it wasn't his fault. He's such a nice guy. But I know better. The dude got his way, five months in and they're going it without because he's had a vasectomy. She gets pregnant. Being that she's already had a kid with a shithead and can't afford to have another shithead kid she decides to have a termination UK and doesn't tell him about it. I fully supported her decision and gave her moral support. When she got home afterwards her ex was waiting for her. He didn't know about the abortion or the new guy and said he was there visiting their son. He immediately started verbally abusing her and got physical with her. She didn't have the strength to make him get off of her or stop what he was doing. She sobbed the whole time and he didn't care she was on her period. She didn't tell me about her ex her for several months because she was convinced it was her fault. That and the first person she told was the nice guy from earlier and his reaction was anger that she got an abortion without his permission. He was trying to get her pregnant, it's his fetish. Both these men committed horrific acts against my friend. Story 14 a friend of mine who has schizophrenia did something similar, beat down the door of his stepdad's flat in the dead of night with a cricket bat he's English and then stabbed him with a screwdriver and cut his throat. After that he walked down to the local train station in the hopes of getting a train to Leeds, told a random person not to worry about the blood he just killed someone. On finding there were no trains at 3am he went to a nearby taxi office and made the same announcement, explaining that he needed a taxi to his mate's house in Leeds. I'm pretty sure he was in the middle of a psychotic episode and his idiot friend who he texted told him to lol mad burn your clothes and lay low at my place. Both of them got jailed, from what I understand his stepdad was a pedophile who abused him when he was younger but this wasn't brought up in court or used as mitigation I'm guessing he didn't tell anyone when it could have helped his case. I only knew because he told me this years before in a drunken admission. Story 15 My brother robbed a pizza guy Twice, he called for a pizza in a park and when the pizza man arrived he pulled a knife on him. High on Xanax, I assume he went to sleep, woke up thinking it was a dream and said, wow that was a great idea I better try it tonight. So he did the exact same thing and the pizza guy came and hit him with a golf club, my brother absolutely deserved it. Pizza delivery guys are like holy saints of the modern world and shouldn't be touched or messed with. Story 16 a friend I grew up with got a job in a care home for vulnerable children and teens, mostly kids with severe learning difficulties or mental health issues or brain damage etc. He was in his mid-twenties and was caught having sex in the care home with a 14-year-old girl. Not only was she 14, she also had learning difficulties so severe there was no way she would have been able to consent. He raped her. He got for years, served about three. He's out now but no one has seen him since, I assume he moved away to prevent getting his head kicked in, nasty bastard. He was always a bit weird but no idea he was capable of something like that. Story 17 
Someone I was close friends with till college was <coughs> his wife's daughters from her first marriage for years. He was also filming it and distributed the material and was teaching other pedos internet security and how to use the dark web. A laptop involved in a sting in the UK and it all his careful trail covering. The investigation revealed over a decade of traceable data of his activities building a CP criminal network. I don't like to think about it. Story 18. My former high school band director suddenly didn't show up to school. Plus, it was on a Friday night game. I was scared that he got into some freak accident since he never misses. A few days later, it was announced he resigned after rumors of him sending <coughs> text messages. There was another incident several years before where he made <coughs> contact with a student taking lessons, and he also supposedly tried giving her alcohol. It was hard to believe how someone you've respected for so long has this type of history. It makes you wonder how someone can do this and have it hidden for so long. Looking back, it was obvious the greater attention to female students. I was one of only 8 minus 9 males who got leadership roles in marching band compared to 30 plus females, not that those females didn't deserve to be section leaders, drum majors, etc., I just wanted to point out the huge margin. He originally was given two 20-year sentences for 40 years in prison, but it got reduced to one year plus five years of probation. Story 19. I can understand 100% how this kind of thing can happen. My mom and dad had a rocky rocky relationship. My mom grew up in hell and she wanted her life a certain way, and my dad grew up believing that family should like father knows best despite his reality being a completely absurd opposite to that show. They had both suffered horrible abuse as children and started their adult lives as teenagers. Both married, got their own place, and were both remarried by 2021sts to each other. Just an example of what was normal to my dad. One time we were in a garage at my grandpa's working on a car my brother and I were useless but he wanted us to learn. My dad had been trying to stay sober for a few months and wasn't going around anyone who used other than his own father. His dad had a lug wrench in his hand and asked my dad to run down to Bobby's real quick and get me some of these things. My dad, who was instructed to call his dad by his first name only said, David, I'm trying to keep my family together and do the right thing. I really don't want to be around those. Before he even finished the sentence my grandpa had him on the ground beating him with that lug wrench. My dad could have killed him easily. He was bigger than him, meaner than him, and stronger than him. He stood up and my grandpa pointed down the road. My dad said, I'm sorry David, I'm going now. My mom lost her mother when she was only four. Her mom took her own life with a pistol. After that she never had a stable home and spent her entire childhood experiencing horrible abuse. Well anyway, my mom had just had a hysterectomy and was laying in bed recovering. My dad came home from work and she demanded he let her check his breath for alcohol. He refused and a heated argument ensued. She threw something at him and he grabbed a hold of the foot of the bed screaming at her and shaking it. I saw her wailing in pain and blood started soaking through her shirt where she had been stapled up. I looked down and saw a big metal makeup case, grabbed it by the handle and swung with all my might. My dad was my intended target, but my mom raised up in the bed about that time and I struck her in the head. He screamed, look what you did to your mom. I noticed a screwdriver sitting on the nightstand, grabbed it and ran at him. I stabbed him probably 10 to 15 times with that dull thing before he managed to get me down and take it from me. I managed to break the skin through his clothes only a few times. But I think about how much different my life would be if it had been a knife or a gun laying there. As a young man, I hated my parents for all of that. As an adult, I know that those two did everything they could and never had the resources to be better. They divorced after multiple separations when I was 15, but they really did stick by each other until right before my dad died. My mom remarried after many, many years. After my ex and I separated I moved back in with my mom temporarily 15 years later and the old man was still there looking out for her, keeping her fire, working on the property and keeping things up. They finally learned to regulate their emotions for the most part and didn't have an incident once in all of that time. It probably helped that they never felt obligated to the other romantically after that. They stayed close as friends, helped each other with my sister's kids, and when my mom couldn't deal with something he was doing she'd just tell him to get lost for a couple weeks. Until my mom started seeing her husband he was always there. I'm sure he was upset about it, but he didn't really express it. 
My mom made her position clear and he dated a few women here and there and would disappear when he did. It was a strange setup, that's for sure. They were two terribly neglected and abused children who found each other very early in life and had no idea how to handle the challenges of a family until they experienced it for themselves. They were great with the grandkids. My dad ultimately couldn't stay sober long enough for my mom to get romantic with him again and that's usually why she'd run him off. They definitely loved each other and they definitely tried. Life ain't easy.